The time is now. Foretold long ago. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash round his waist. I sometimes feel for Isaiah he was called to be a prophet before all the exciting aspects of the good news had been fully revealed in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. So like many prophets of the Old Testament, he begins on what might sound like a depressing note. Isaiah's ministry started in a difficult time, when Judah was rather like a tree stump that had been cut down. But even in the midst of that darkness and confusion, he was given the incredible role of explaining something fundamental about the gospel that would come to fruition hundreds of years later. Something profound will happen. Out of the stump of Jesse, a shoot will come up, and from that shoot, a branch will bear fruit. Isaiah goes on to give definition to this hope. This shoot, root, branch will be a person upon whom the Spirit of the Lord will rest, a person who will be born in history, who will be full of wisdom and understanding, perfect counsel and the might of God, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This person, who will be born in the line of David and Jesse, will also be a judge who's perfectly righteous and faithful. Knowing nothing of the person of Christ, Isaiah perfectly describes the coming of the Lord Jesus. This is a Kairos moment. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. The prophet then goes on to describe something even further in the future. And this time we identify more with Isaiah because we have not yet seen this either. We look back on the first coming of Christ into the world at Advent, but we also look forward to his second coming. In his prophecy, Isaiah tells us a little of what that will mean. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. When Jesus returns, he'll make all things new, we'll be safe from all that once sought to hurt us. Verse 9, they will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. There'll be no death, destruction or pain. It's really hard to imagine such a life, but it's as real as the truth of Jesus' first coming. We can look back and see that Isaiah's prophecies of the Messiah were fulfilled in Jesus' first coming. What a brilliant foundation for us to use to look forward as we wait for the rest of his prophecy to be fulfilled. Advent is traditionally a time for Christians to think about the second coming of Christ. Take some time to remember that this will be as real as Jesus' first coming and that like Isaiah, we can look forward to it. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you for your invitation to come close to you. I thank you that you made this possible by giving us your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you that you do not leave us languishing in our brokenness, shame and rebellion, but you make a way for us and you call us home. Please speak to me this week through your word. Challenge my habits, thoughts and inclinations. 
Help me to live in the light of Jesus' return through Jesus Christ. Amen.